Okay, so for roll call, I see online we have Miki Vasolid, Chelsea Ratner, and Raina Sarkar. And then in the room, we have Steve Burkholder and Acting Chairwoman Ellen Daviero. That is a quorum. Yay, phew. Okay, and then so the first thing that we need to do is we need to do approval of the minutes. So um, did everyone get a chance to uh, review the minutes and does anybody have any um, comments, questions? So the only thing that I noticed um, in the minutes was that um, when we were talking about the GE um, area and the, the new building and we had asked for um, trees I just um, to um, help with the um, blocking the view of the, the newer building is that I just wanted to make sure that they were, um, you know, evergreens so that they didn't lose their leaves in the fall and then you would be able to see them you know, see everything right through the trees. So I think that was the only thing. Yeah, we, we talked about, but it's not captured in the motion. Yeah, so okay. it, yeah, it's... um, it's uh, Probably mm -hmm. probably line 71 or 72. Yeah, just somewhere in there, just, yeah. It's, so it's not that big of a deal, but I just want to make sure that, um, that the trees that they're going to put in will... Because when you drive by there, I know it's gorgeous now because it's all beautiful trees and love and life. But um, but in the winter time, it'll all be all those leaves will be gone. So, um, do I have? Um, did anybody else have any comments? Okay. Does anybody want to um, make a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Uh, as amended. Yep. I'll make a motion. Can I, can I second it? You can. Okay, so I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure if I could do both. You can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so right now um, we're up to privilege of the floor. Oh, wait, can we just call for the vote? So all in oh, favor. Oh, say. sorry. All in favor of um, the approval of the minutes amended? Aye. Aye. I see a shake and an aye. Mm -hmm. Rihanna. Okay. Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay. We'll adopt them as amended. Great. Thank you. All right. And so the next item is four, and it's um, the privilege of the floor. Do I need to go somewhere to speak? Or? I think just up there because we are um, recording it, and that, that way they mm -hmm. can um, hear it. Yeah, and make sure you talk into the microphone so that they hear you on the recording. Okay. <laughs> you might have to move it up a little. Mm -hmm. You can. Yes. speaker. Uh, <laughs> my name is Lois Mills. I live on uh, 12 Hummingbird Court in Niskuna and the <clears throat> Hummingbird Manor. Okay. And um, I'm part, uh, Kathy and I are part of Niskuna Rotary. And Dr. Ramasubramanian spoke uh, to a few of us one night and suggested it might be good since one of our main focus points at, uh, in Niskuna Rotary is uh, environment. Might be good to come to the meeting, see what it's all about. Said they don't get too many visitors. And uh, uh, it was very interesting, really uh, got me thinking about things. So first of all, I want to say, if there are things that you think Niskuna Rotary could do to help all of this, you can let us know. We bring it up to the meeting. We're always looking for projects. Um, and secondly, um, <clears throat> my uh, townhouse community, <clears throat> has just signed a three-year uh, contract with a landscaper, so nothing really could happen right away, but looking eventually for suggestions on how to maybe ease away from all of the okay. stuff they spray, and I'm not sure how much um, leverage I would have, but thinking about, thinking about it. Great. Yeah, we all, that's, this is the first step, so perfect. Yeah, so, and I did look at your things online about wh what to do in different months, okay. but, you know, as an individual, I can't do anything about our yards, but something to think about, you know, I've got three years to work on it if you mm -hmm. come up with any suggestions, you know. Great, well, thank you very much. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we started the pesticide-free program um, sort of like mid-COVID, so it's, I think this is going to be like my 
first full summer of being able to like walk neighborhoods and mm -hmm. um, and do that sort of kind of outreach. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I know we're going to start um, the it's the we um, composting. Should I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. So just you know, we're um, we have a grant for composting. So um, that's something that we need to really um, take to heart and start doing in our town and how we get rid of our garbage and where it goes and pay attention to that sort of thing. So, yeah. And then, you know, and any of, uh, and I mean, he, he spoke to you about specifically the NRI, right? Is that what he came, is that what? What's NRI? The na the natural, re the natural resource inventory. Is that what he came to talk to him about? No. Oh. He spoke about dandelions and <laughs> lawns and, oh, he, it was kind of, it was, it was funny, but it was, Okay. Pointed, you know. Okay. You know, okay. 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 So he, all right. So I just, off the top of my head too, like we're doing low mow initiatives. And one of the things that we heard from residents is that they would like to see like wildflowers sprinkled into the low mow areas. And so like, we're trying to reach out to organizations, you know, to see if they have flowers or they can help us plant like perennials that'll, you know, kind of perennialize in the meadows and things like that. So if that's something that the Rotary Club does, um, we might be able to partner with you on that stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah. We could look into something like that. We, we planted some trees over by the. Then our soccer fields. The soccer They're beautiful. Field. Yeah. They died and then we got more. Planted, <laughs> yeah. so. but, I, yeah. I think one of them, only one of them died this winter and it was a really hard winter for trees, but the rest of them look really good. I drove up there the other day. They look pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They look good. And you know, I live in the middle of the rice bird sanctuary, so it's kind of nice to have that all around. And my granddaughter goes to SUNY ESF and she came and told me how my entire yard was invasive species. And <laughs> <laughs> so, That's great. you know, it's just yeah. all kind of enlightening now. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, think about it. <clears throat> when you come up with things, projects and stuff, contact us and we'll see what we can do to help. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time to come tonight and to uh, share that with us. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank Does you. Ashok have your contact information or can you share it with... Um, us yeah okay do you want my email well you probably don't want to say it on public because it'll be on record forever <laughs> <laughs> i don't really i don't really care i've been putting it in the newspaper for a long time for rotary so <laughs> but here, you can write it on here before you go and then i can reach out to you because another thing is if you're learning all about invasive species like in um new york right now new york state i think they announced it's invasive species week or the governor did something about invasive species oh, yeah, it is. And so, like, there may be times when the town might want to try to do an invasive species poll or something, and it would be good to have volunteers that we could reach out to. Yeah, well. So, yeah. Sometimes we're at things where we have a booth. <laughs> oh, okay. We could even maybe use some of your... You know, you had the July, August things. Yes. The, and then maybe pass out some of that stuff, you know. Okay. And we have the pesticide free pledge that people can take. And yes. And one of our members said he was going to do that. Oh, great. I'm going to get a sticker. And okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're interested in helping. If great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. It's not an I thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let me just see here. Um, is there any, is there anybody, is there anybody online that it wants to, is, do you, is there anybody? Um, I didn't, um, there's no one online, online, and I didn't receive any emails either. Okay. Do we want to thank Roy though for all the, for that great email? Yeah, you could do that under, well, you could do that now. That's fine. So I, um, I'm sure everybody read the email from Roy. Let me just see here. I can um, pull it up, but he did such a nice job with, um, with um, he wrote us a nice letter of all the things that he had been doing, wildlife at Blatnik Park. So I just thought I would do a, like a quick, um, it just said, dear Niskuna Town officials, this edit, um, please add this letter to the, oh, this is for the highway department and the conservation advisory council. So he just wanted to let you know that the bob boba links are back on May 25th, at least 25th, at least two males displaying and one female were seen on the larger um, land cap, uh, landfill cap. And then presently limited mowing on the land cap is allowing these and other grassland birds to nest. So thank you to the highway department. And then um, 
it's, it's Bob is Unic. Is that how you say his last name? U N I C K. He surveyed 18 uh, bluebird boxes at Blatnik. Um, they observed bulbulinks and a variety of other birds and insects, and one gardener snake. And then uh, seven of the boxes contained tree swallows. Um, Bob banded for adults. Three of the boxes contained bluebird nests. Two with nestlings. Four of the nestlings were were banded, and one set of five. What, um, was just too young to band and other birds seen and heard on the 25th and the 11th of May include song sparrows, cardinals, red winged blackbirds, um, a pair of red tailed hawks, gra um, grackle robins, three uh, killdeer plovers. I've never seen those hmm. red bellied woodpeckers, pileated woodpecker, uh, catbirds, wood thrush, house wren, tufted titmouse, um, small hawk, either a cooper's or sharp shinned. And barn swallows and morning doves, and then he lists um, insects: um, the the copper butterflies, white sulfur butterflies, um, yellow sulfur butterflies, bumblebees, and then he also included some pictures. Which oh, there they are. Yeah, I can't make them any bigger, but. And so um, we just uh, wanted to really just thank Roy for his continued effort to um, create that Lomo part, and to work to make it. Um, a good habitat for our friends. Um, anything else? So, all right, let me just go back to my meeting minutes here. All right, so the next um, is um, environmental assessment form referrals. Yeah, we don't have any tonight. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we're just gonna move on to the discussion items. So um, we have four of them. So the first one is 2207 and 2209 at Knott Street and the Broken Inn. So um, it okay. looks, okay. Yeah, so this one is just, um, it's just an update. It's the beginning of a process. Um, the Broken Inn opened and the ice cream window was a bit more successful than the planning board anticipated. <laughs> and there was some conflicts between pedestrians and cars. So um, just in order to give um, the owner time to figure out a permanent solution, the um, planning department let them put up some temporary barriers to keep the pedestrians and the cars separated. But now he needs to come back and amend his special use permit. Okay. So he'll come to the meeting and he'll talk to you guys about his ideas. Um, I think they want to address the intersection holistically. There'll be a public hearing and things like that. But um, because you guys get comments from people, I wanted to let you know what's going on. What out, What's out there right now is temporary. Um, this is a map of what's out there right now. Um, so is it, it, is it like this, the whole, so there's um, those? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sadly, no. <laughs> What's out there right now is um, just uh, jersey barriers and oh, benches okay. because okay. it had to be the very bare minimum of what would separate the cars from the pedestrians. Okay. So that's so the the map is what's out there right now, temporarily. And then this this pretty picture I think is where he would like to get. I don't um, know that the planning board's fully on board with tables yet, but um, this is his like sort of future idea. It may need some tweaks of configuration because of parking. Okay. But that's kind of what his concept is. Okay. Um, yeah, I do have to say, I mean, just, you know, the whole place is all torn up. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's kind of hard. Yeah. Like I've driven around it a couple of times going, hmm. That's, uh, <laughs> but um, very glad that, um, one, I'm glad that the, um, that the ice cream window is successful because that's always nice. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to um, be able to walk, you know, um, in your own community or bicycle, you know, to be able to get an ice cream with your children. That's always a fun activity, especially um, in the Northeast. And um, I hope that we are able to uh, come to a nice agreement here on something that looks sort of like this because this looks lovely. Yeah, I like the green. I feel like it needs some green. So one of the things like that you just mentioned is that the county is obviously tearing everything up. Yes. So, I mean, he can't even implement something like this right now. So yeah. you, the, what he has out there is pretty ugly. I mean, but it's safe. Okay. And, which <laughs> and is that's the, the only thing that really matters at this point. <laughs> okay. And then now that it's safe, 
um, we'll start working on ideas like this and some of the things that we might see, see how it works to have the cars bumped out a little because he's bumped them out a little. Mm -hmm. You know, it's slightly less parking. So see if that causes parking elsewhere. Like we can kind of preview the environmental effects before we actually have to get the, you know, yeah. the form. So that gives us a chance to kind of see. So feel free to take a stroll out there and see how it's working too because that configuration out there is similar to this picture okay. but not as nice. Okay. Um, so that may be, you know, the best solution or the best solution may be to really reconfigure the parking and put the outdoor seating, you know, in a different spot. So it'll be an evolving process. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Okay. So is okay. We move on to the next item. Yep. So the next one is, um, is on the agenda is the uh, 2837 aqueduct. Um, it's the river's um, ledge application for site plan review for our, uh, this is like the third, right? The third rendition, re revision of this? This is the third rendition. Okay. Um, you guys, I'm not sure either of you were on the planning board when this came, or the CAC when this came through. Do either of you remember this? I do not. I do. Okay. I remember, um, yeah, just the bare, like, because originally they were going to have apartments and they were going to have businesses underneath it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So did that get kiboshed? No, I mean, um, I think so originally, I didn't put the original plans in here, but I can originally, if you look, Rivers Run Drive and Ledge Drive are the two entrance, entrance roads on this picture. Originally, the building spanned the entirety of the two roads. So it was two stories and it went between both streets. And um, where there's a standalone commercial building, they had that commercial space integrated into the building. Yeah. Oh, yes. And there is some commercial space still integrated into this building, but less. And then they made a standalone commercial building. And that's partly because they were limiting their wetland impacts. Okay, but they it's still but this is three stories. But it's three stories. So because they um, went to underground parking. Because yeah, no, actually they always had underground okay. parking, but before it was only two stories and a hundred units, but it had basically three acres of wetland impacts. Now it's three stories with sixty units yeah. and it only has like one acre of wetland impacts. Um they weren't able to get their three acre wetland impact permit with the Army Corps of Engineers. Which um you guys had a lot of comments about phase two. So phase one is the phase that's essentially been built. It's the 16 apartment units that are closer to the river. Right. And phase two, there were, you guys had a lot of concerns about the wetland um, impacts. And the majority of comments that the planning board put into the phase two um, conditions in the site plan were from you guys. Okay. <laughs> so, yay. Yes. So, um, things that we have to think about when we're reviewing, reviewing phase two is that what phase you guys three. identified is to protect the rural character of Aqueduct Road with facades and landscaping um, that remain the same height and character as the renderings presented to the Conservation Advisory Council on May 3rd. I should have put those in the packet. I'll find them and email them to you. That's okay. And then, um, designed to mitigate the loss of any wetlands. Um, be careful about the trees that are being removed, protect the northern long-eared bat, um, reduce the impacts to wetlands wherever possible. Um, and then just actually, I mean, I think this is you guys too because you work on complete streets, but they want a construction of a public parking area to access the Mohawk Hudson bike hike trail. Um, yeah, I saw that. And then when they changed a couple things around on uh, – phase one, like they added an additional amenity building, the planning board before it said they wanted wanted them to um, do a sidewalk from Aqueduct Road to the entrance of Aqueduct Park, but now it's shall. So sidewalk along Aqueduct Park, uh, park parking lot for the multi-use path, you know, reduce wetland impacts, be careful of the trees and really pay attention to the facade and landscaping on Aqueduct Road. So as you go uh, into Rivers Run Drive, uh, um, you're going to take Rivers Run Drive and that parking is just those spaces on the left-hand side. That's, the, that's the parking. So it's. Yes, that's the public parking for the Mohawk Hudson bike path. So it's about like 10, 10, 10, 1, 2, 3, 7, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7 parking spaces. Yeah. Okay. And then. um and then they can access the um, the path, and then but um, and then but there is no access 
um, is there access from the commercial building to the path? Just uh, so, oh, um, yeah, I mean, this is a road. It's a road, right? So they <laughs> but there isn't like a sidewalk that goes from the commercial okay, building to so the path. Right, so that okay. might be a comment. Well, I mean, or just, you know, make sure that, you know, obviously if they had the squig the lines there so that they know it's a road. So for crossing, so people will know that to, um, that they can go up. I mean, I don't know what's going to be in that commercial space. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I, th I think that, um, we could, well, we can ask the developer, um, but I was, I mean, I was thinking restaurant, but I guess we should probably ask him. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I guess my first, so does anybody um, have any comments or questions or um, is everyone understanding what we're looking at? I'm understanding what we're looking at, but I, I don't have the history. So I guess what, what are, what are the next steps we're trying to get to? So, um, so they have gone, they have shrunk it from three, they have to get a, a um a variant right they have to get a height variance a variance a height variance mm -hmm. and they also have to what about the um the um the wetlands they have gotten the permit for the army corps of engineers oh, or they're they in have. the process it, i mean essentially it's a yes they're doing some major mitigation in order to get that permit okay um the army corps said no to 3 but said yes to the to 1 to 1 yeah. okay all right and part of the mitigation they're doing mitigation in the area i guess they're really helping out over at the um, Maple Animal Shelter needed some wetland habitat creation or something like that. So um, the Maple, oh, across on uh, Rexford Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess my concern is, is that it's a three-story building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the concern, I think. It, I so they shrunk the impacts of the wetland, but it made the building grow in height. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, and and, I think, um, so I guess my, right. So these, so, and the units behind them. Oh, here I'll show you what it looks the units like. behind them are not are two, right? Yeah. Correct. And this so, was because this was originally going to be two. How many units was this building originally? A hundred, but it's now sixty-six. Right. And neither of those numbers include the um, the other buildings. The, the no, though that there's one hundred sixty units in the phase one. Yeah. yeah, this is phase two. Phase one is approved and essentially built, and this is phase two now. Got it. Uh, so I guess um, that's my first concern is exactly. that you want – so I guess I wouldn't want – in order – the third-story person building all those people will then be over – looking over all of the mm -hmm. other people that are below them – um, and on the other side of the of the bike path, is that correct? Yeah. So I think, and this is just from my own experience out there, that this is higher than the bike path. This land is higher than the bike path. Yeah. So, it's so it goes like be, Aqueduct Road, then this land, then the bike path, then the one six. So it's going to be significantly. So even anybody who's in the first or second floor will for sure be see like be you know. Able to see over the bike path into the 160 units? Yes. Yes, definitely. Okay. I mean, we're trying to make sure that those units are screened to the bike path, which would, in effect, screen to this building, but the screening is going to take a while to grow. I mean, do you guys remember when this, when the, oops, I'm having a hard time with my. <laughs> yeah, when they were putting all the. Uh... Yeah, so there's a ton of screening by that recreation building, remember? Mm -hmm. They're putting, like. Mm -hmm. Lots of evergreens, but they'll take a while to grow. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I, I mean, even, even with, um, even with that, um, they're not going to be able to, um, you're still going to see into it, over these, you know, the recreation, anything that's taller than that, you're still going to be able to see over it. I mean, you know, I mean, there's no trees that you could put in there. Because it's built like that, you know, just it's built like what you yeah, said. Yeah, because the natural topography is higher. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And there isn't anything on Aqueduct Road that's three stories. There's nothing. So that's why I, I think it's, like, important to stick to the first bullet, which was, like, I, so they, 
try are saying that they're trying to be sensitive and we sprung this meeting on them. <laughs> this um, yeah. Yeah. Cause I wanted you guys to have it so you could think about it. It's just a discussion item for the time being, okay. but they were saying that the reason that they broke this facade up so much is because they're trying to make it look like row houses. So they're trying to make it look like multiple housing, you know, residential, you know, and they're hoping that because this building set down from Aqueduct Road, if they make it all, if they make the facade broken up, it won't look like one giant building. And they do have a rendering, which I might be able to pull up. Is it right there? Well, this is the rendering with the peak roof. They do have a rendering with a flat roof, which they might be able to do within the 35 feet. <laughs> um, and see if I can find it. Um, but they're trying to make it look more residential and mitigate the look of the height by breaking up the facade. Um, I think there's mixed opinion on how well that's being done. <laughs> but better, better than some I've seen. Yeah, let me. I'll show you the flat roof. So the flat roof one may be compliant. Like we actually couldn't say you can't have three stories. We can only say that it can't be more than thirty-five feet high. Sure. Yeah, I have it here. Oh, let the record reflect that um, oh. Mr. Rama Subramanian has come to the meeting. Yeah. Doctor. Okay, so. Um, so just to bring you up to speed quickly while she's looking for that, um, it's just that, so originally this was 100 um, units, um, and it's above, it's 100 units, and it was, supposed, it was going to be 100 units, but they had three acres of wetland that they were um, going to um, have to mitigate and they have shrunk it down to 66 units and one um, and one acre of wetland that they are getting the variance from from um, from the um, the engineers. Why do I always zoning board? Yeah, but oh, the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army yeah. Corps of Engineers, and that they are then um, every time you say variance, I'm sorry, I think zoning board. It's just a permit. With a the permit. Army Corps of engineers. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. So um, yeah, I have to make sure I have the right language. So what they are proposing now is 66 units, but um, to be three stories. So the, she's, um, yeah. she was looking for a picture to show us that they can't be taller than 35 feet. feet. And they've got it at 41. But Ellen, this is what you were just talking about. Here's Aqueduct Road all the way on the right. It's hard to see. Sorry. Oops, I can email this to you after. Clark and I didn't. Got this um, not very many, not not very long ago. But the Aqueduct Road is higher than the building. That's the car there is yeah. essentially on Aqueduct Road. Then the bike path is all the way over on the left is lower than the building. Right. And then the housing and then is all even, those apartments. Is even lower than that. Right. So yeah. Those are apartments. Those are not those are all apartments. Yeah, they look like they could condos, be condos, but, but they are actually apartments. Okay, so everything is, um, is there, and these are apartments. Yeah, and this is it with the peaked roof at 41 feet, and that is it, which may be compliant. Oof. Or it's close. Um, Very urban. The flat roof. It's always <laughs> And I mean, well, put solar just because it's it. compliant doesn't mean it would get approved. Like okay. for the record, they could just say no. Okay. But I mean, they, you know, they're trying to figure out ways. What are ways that they could make it, mitigate the height that they're looking at? Was this the one that they said that they were also thinking about having covered, um, covered uh, parking? Because I was hoping. I don't. The they other, might. The oh, with sites. solar. So this is the one we talked about them putting a green roof on and growing. Um, plants and stuff on the roof when they originally had a flat roof for two stories. <laughs> okay, and how did that go? Apparently not very well. Green. Oh. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, there's definitely a benefit to them reducing the footprint 
Um, yes. There's a huge, now huge chunk of land that will be forever wild and isn't disturbed. Laura, where is that land uh, forever wild? Where's the what? The the huge chunk of land that's forever wild. Oh, well, I mean, it's not huge, but um, hold it's on. to the right of it. Between that, between that and right, and the um, the commercial space. Like over here, does it change me? Uh, if um, are we done? So sorry, I might just here. I'm looking at page fifty-three, page twelve of the packet. Yeah, that'll work. Um. Page fourteen too, because mm. or well, no, fourteen well. doesn't have. 14 has a commercial. 12 is better. 12. Let me just see. 13, mine are split. Oh, yeah. 12. Yeah. So, uh, Ashok, before this plan, there was a plan for a building to essentially span from Rivers Red all the way to Ledge Drive. So the building went all the way across. <laughs> and now that area between the end of the building and Ledge Drive is going to remain forest and um open wetlands. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, they listened to the CAC's recommendation to mitigate wetland. I think at the time, the CAC was really concerned about how big of a wetland impact they were proposing. So that's a good thing. <laughs> but the, um, so the footprint shrunk, but it got higher. And so now we have to look at ways to mitigate the height. So does putting the parking spaces below make the building higher it does because they can't sink the building into the ground any lower than it's going the fusco building had the same issue so it's kind of nice to have not the impervious surface all around the building and have the parking underneath is it that they don't have enough parking is that the issue yeah the code requires two parking spaces per unit so if they don't have underground parking then they'd have to have a lot more parking on the outside of the building but you can't sink the building into the ground like you couldn't have you can't sink it three or four feet into the ground, you know, to make the height lower because you've already sunk it so deep because of the underground parking. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see a compromise with um, not underground parking and two stories, and I'd like to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Ellen, what's the nature of your objection to underground parking? Absolutely nothing. I don't want the building to be three stories. So one of the stories would be the parking. Okay. It helps cut down the. That's what I just asked. I I, I thought so, but yeah, view, yeah. Oh, the view. Okay. And I think that this is already the three. There is no other three-story building on Aqueduct Road, and it's already hot. It's this is already going to be big. And um and we also yeah, so I I would say that would be my um, that's my uh feeling about this. And I, um, and I don't see where there is any commercial space in this building. Oh, I'll show you. There is. On the bottom. On the bottom. Um, you have to look at here. Uh, oops. Yeah. So the commercial is the side that faces the bike path. Okay. What page is that? That is page 26. Okay. Because I think that the hope is the commercial may just mainly serve the residents of the building, but right. if possible, if the commercial can be connected enough to the bike path and it could be mm. like a cafe or something mm -hmm. that could draw the bike path people, you know, up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally going to be like, I mean, on the bike path. So if it's something that can serve the residents and people using the bike path, that'd be really cool. So it's just on the left-hand side. There. It's just on the left-hand side. And if it's you go to the four, site plan, that's... It's, it's 4,200 square feet. Yeah. And okay. so it's essentially like on the site plan, it's this side of the building where, you know, you would, if you were parking or whatever, you could, you could go over to this commercial space and then go down to the bike path. Like I had originally asked for them to have some outdoor space associated with the commercial yes. site so that like if it could be a cafe, there could be some outdoor tables, which, you know, would sort of put people on the bike path on notice that there was a place that they could go for a commercial um, but I think they said they didn't have enough space, but I might ask them to do it again. And there is no outside area for any of these residents, right? In all, all. Not on this plan. I mean, they have obviously access to all of the amenities in right. the in the lower part because so they can one use owner. the recreation building. They can use the recre the recreation building and all of that. Yes. 
And so if they're going to have a pet or something, they're going to come out of their building and have to go down to the bike path. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's not very I, much. I, w- I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't really recommend walking on Aqueduct Road there. I mean, there's a shoulder, no. but. Mm-hmm. And I don't see, and there's no, and I don't. Um, okay. In the, yeah. Does anybody else have any um, mm-hmm. thoughts that they'd like to share? Um, I just had a question, like how much loss of green space are we talking about with the uh, with the new configuration and what is the improvement in terms of green space over the old configuration? Um, and that includes wetland and trees and all that. So- I can bring the old rendition up for you guys. Hold on. It's give or take two acres, right? Is that if you're going to do the math? They're not anticipating, though, that the people can use that space after. that those two acres in there between the two buildings, are they? No, I mean, it really is wetlands. Like they were proposing to disturb and fill the wetlands. um, And then they removed that. Okay. Okay, so... um, let me just make this bigger. This was the original concept. Um, so you can see it was essentially one long building between Rivers Run and Ledge Drive. And they have it labeled. The most right now, that's, that's the wetland. Um, it's all wetland from building, building 17 and building 18. It's pretty much all wetland. But they essentially removed building 18 from this proposal and stuck 16 of the units into building 17. This is what I think it was originally. I think those circles, Ellen, on the top of the building were the green roof. <laughs> Remember? <Yeah. laughs> um, let me see if I can. That was one of their elevations. I don't think you like that one. Do we have that more? Oops, sorry. That's, hey, it's hard because it's they. This is the third one. This is the third one. Yeah, the first two were pretty similar though. The first two. Where the entire building, I crashed my computer because I have too many windows open. <laughs> the first two were essentially the entire building going all the way along. So this one, like you could see building 17 and building 18 were connected in that first rendition. Yeah. This is the second one. The first one had an indoor pool. The second one, I think, um, they weren't able to accommodate the indoor pool. So they broke the buildings apart and then put an outdoor pool. The third one doesn't have a pool at all. I think it just became not economically feasible for them to have a pool. And these residents can use the pool that, um, yeah, yeah, otherwise they would just have two pools. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which, you know, I suppose maybe you can never have too many pools, but. Across the street. Yeah. yeah, so this pool here in this, this site down here, this pool is available to everybody. They're building this pool. Okay. But you'd have to walk a long way like or you'd have to drive. They put the recreation is on is now on this side. So the recreation center used before is over here. Yeah, yeah. So that's the so what they they got rid of one building. They added the units, but they want to go up. 
but they want to go up. Okay. So, I guess from my standpoint, I'd like it to be, I'm um, not to be, you know, I'd like to see two stories. I would like to see um, a little tiny bit of green space for them. And I would, you know, you know, still like to push for, you know, solar panels or green energy of some sort or, um, um, oh, sorry. This was the long building. So that's where they were. Right. So that's what you would see as you drive down. This is a two story building. Yes. But it's like about a thousand feet long. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or more. <laughs> right. And this is shorter and taller now. Yes. So, I mean, this is probably like 33 feet tall <laughs> because even though it's two stories, you can see it has the yeah. ornamentation. Yeah. yeah. But 33 over... It's still different. Yeah, for no question. 43, 40, whatever. I think that's the end. But anyway, that's where we were. Okay. And then what we have is what was before you. So I wrote down for comments. Would like to see a two-story building rendition. Concerned about the height. Good. Should we say good with, with less wetland impact? <laughs> yeah. Grateful for less... Uh, yeah. I definitely like the like lessening the impact on the budget. Yeah, I think that they are set on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think they would have impacted more, but the Army Corps said no. Yeah. But, but I mean, you guys were concerned about the wetland impact, yeah. too, so that's not a bad no for us. Right. And especially given the uh, given the wetland and all that, I, I, I would put in a request for pesticide free. We always do do that, yeah. So, so right. pesticide-free maintenance of the building. Yeah, and any green, I would just say, and you know, continue to push for green energy. Building, push for, those are like our standard. We should just like pr write prescription, our standard comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I, I guess if, if you know, are, are, are we saying that we prefer <laughs> them to take some green space to get rid of the third story or are we just going to try to see what they can come up with to, to eliminate the third the third story so i wasn't going to cross that bridge okay because they um because i feel that the army corps of engineers has said um no yep. so i'm going to go with what the army corps engineer and i'm just going to say aesthetically this doesn't match yep. what the rest of Aqueduct Road looks like and that it is a very large building to have be three stories to be then this much higher than all the other places that are below it. Okay. Okay. And, um, and you know, the, um, can I say it? The Nisqueuna residents across the way, you know, the. Huh? Oh yeah. I mean, it's important that we. The yeah. Nisqueuna residents that live over in, um, in, in Alplaz, this will just be more, just even more light. That'll be above them, you know, coming over. So I think we should be, we should, this is something that we should pay attention to. Sure. Okay. Those are my thoughts. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to share? Okay. Okay. I thought that was really good. Sorry for not having all the, oh, go ahead, Mickey. Okay. So, um, I noticed there were two multi-purpose meeting rooms in one of the buildings. I don't know which floor it is. And then um, right outside of those multi-purpose meeting room, there's an outdoor terrace area. And I'm just wondering how that outdoor terrace area would look like, because I think that would be a good place to have more a little bit of more landscaping, um, maybe s some uh, smaller bushes and maybe spaces for, you know, planting some flowers um, or possibly 
um, more naturally looking seating, you know, with chairs and tables or, you know, picnic table or, or whatever that is. Um, that's just what came to my mind. That would be really nice to have that kind of uh, more natural looking environment around there. And I don't know, um, what, you know, what direction that terrace is facing, uh, it, whether it's facing um, to the parking lot, that I, 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 I'm not quite sure, or that that side is facing the bike trail. Um, so just, just my thought. So I think they're all facing parking because the parking goes all the way around the building. Well, well one of them is the road. Yeah. Um, so the outdoor terrace is Terrence on the third floor. On the third floor, but that doesn't mean you couldn't add yeah. flowers and like vines and things to it. Yeah. Okay, so it's the third floor. Okay. Yeah. I see. So it'll be like a balcony sitting space. Yeah. Yeah. But you it's, could it's eight hundred square feet. So mm. it's just a little bit smaller than my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's still something. So it's, it's not nothing. <laughs> it's not nothing, and it's um, you know, so it's not nothing. So yeah. Okay. So I add that. And you can see it. Um, it's on page 27. Okay. That what she's referring to. Yep. Okay. okay thanks. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So can I also add um, outdoor seating for commercial space to complement bike path and maybe connect other commercial building to bike path mm -hmm. somehow? Yeah, the one on um, the one, the commercial. Yeah, the yeah, standalone. So we didn't really even. Um, so there is also um, that commercial. If you look back on um, page 12, so there is also that uh, commercial building to your right that is um, that will be commercial, all commercial. That is on the other side of. It. Oh, yeah. And then ask for purpose too. Ledge Drive. So that. Um, and that has some parking spaces in the back. It looks like it has some shrubs. And you're just going to add outdoor seating for that area? Or maybe what it is. Yeah, yeah, maybe outdoor seating for that area would make more sense than the other one. But um, maybe, like, then if you add outdoor seating to complement the bike path, you also add, like, a, you know, like a sidewalk or something so that people aren't walking on the road. Yeah. I mean, it's only the driveway to get in and out, so it's not as it's not terrible. No, but even just even a lane, like even a you know a you know a bike lane or something. But I don't. They've they've already made the road, so yeah. So uh, ask yeah. for connectivity of the commercial building to the bike path. Okay. Ask for purpose and maybe outdoor seating. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely want people to be able to use the bike path and to be able to come to this commercial space. That it will be a draw. To, yeah. It will be a draw. Um, okay. Does anybody, uh, um, anybody else have any other questions, comments? Okay. No. All right. So let's move on. Let me just go next to the next one, which is, um, which is 2341 Knott Street in the, um, Chase Bank ATM. Yeah. So this is also just kind of an FYI. Um, it's, a um, Chase Bank is looking to put a, uh, ATM in the parking lot of ShopRite. Um, it's over by kind of the lowest end of the parking of the whole facility, like as it's starting to dip down towards um, Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And um, there's like a strip of parking there where they would remove the parking and put in ATM. So there's eight parking spaces there. Um, Clark did an exhaustive parking research. I mean, really quick and Clark. In. it was like it took us it took him like three days it was so much county parking spaces but anyway it is okay with parking spaces okay. um and um i think the planning board has been working on muting the colors um so that it's not you know too light or obnoxious and then the tree council has been working on there's a lot of dead and dying landscaping in the area because there was a lot of ash trees in that original planting and they all died. A lot of them on this side have been removed, but there's a lot of stumps. So the tree council went through and sent comments to replace the dead and dying uh, landscaping. Um, I thought I had it in here, but they also, some of the landscaping is just not very well tended. So they were also asking for perennial beds and stuff to be upgraded um, back to the way they should be. So if they're going to get the benefit of having the ATM here, they said it's 
spruce up this place a little bit. So they're okay. um, working on that. But the planning board, I think, is getting to the point where they're, you know, start. if you guys had any comments, we could incorporate that them in. It, it's also just a, this is going on, but, you know, it, your thoughts are always appreciated. Well, I have noticed yellow pesticide plants in that. Uh, oh yeah, we should put that. that area. So, <laughs> yeah, even, uh, send that note uh, to him. Um, uh, uh, all the hard work that you and Ellen have put in for a pesticide-free pledge, and given the proximity, high traffic of pets and children and people shopping in that area would uh, would chase bank consider being a, co a commercial adopter of our pesticide free place. Be happy to link them up with a commercial um, mm -hmm. person that mows lawns that will take care of that. Okay, I'll, I think that's a great idea. We'll put that as a consideration to have the planning board ask them if they would adopt the pledge. Chase, Chase doesn't own the parking lot right it's some someone owns the parking lot and then they're leasing lease correct they're yeah. leasing okay. they, i they're don't know what they have control of in their lease though like we we can certainly ask so I, i'm not very familiar with with this but i just so it's only it's going to be just one one row of parking it the drive through is just one drive through it's not multiple it's not like it's not like you can go to the ATM, like some banks, you can go to the ATM and then they have like three. It's just no, one. It's just one. It's kind of hard to see. It's probably especially hard to see up on that screen. But like, I, I mean, I'm looking. Yeah. Do you see how like, I mean, those are the yellow lines that would be painted on the asphalt. And yeah. then there's very light cars there uh -huh. that show the stacking. Um, and the ATM is just to the left of the cars. So it's essentially taking like eight parking spots that were, you know, perpendicular to the drive lane, putting an ATM and then allowing the cars to drive through. So can you forgive my ignorance, but is there a Chase Bank there? No. Okay. No, the, the closest Chase Bank is... Um, it's over in the new... Mohawk Commons. In Mohawk Commons. Mm -hmm. So they're going to lease this from the... ShopRite. ShopRite. Mm -hmm. And they would like to just put in... And in doing that, we have to have lights, right? Yeah. So the lighting plan is on page. Is it still on page 35? There. That's the lighting plan. A105. Um, and actually, Clark just reached out to them. Clark, you can jump in here at any time because Clark's been doing most of the work on these projects. <laughs> okay. But Clark reached out to them because... Um, the planning board had concerns of the added lighting and like they had the lighting fixture too high. So I think Clark, they're going to redo this lighting plan and they haven't yet. Right. This is still the original one, I think. Right. Because they're actually lowering the light pole one foot from 23 feet to 22 feet. So that will affect the light dispersion as well. Okay. Cause they're across the street from the new, from the new apartments, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, and um, one of the other things is they want the planning board asked for a view of what it would look like, I think, from those apartments to see if they needed to add any landscaping. Um, but I guess adding landscaping for an ATM is a little bit tricky because you don't want to add so much landscaping that, um, that um, you know, that nobody can see what's happening at the ATM because people are withdrawing money but you want to make sure that it's not negatively impacting the neighbors. So there's like safety lighting and safety sight lines, but then let's make sure that it's not negatively impacting yeah. all the adjacent and there's neighbors. Cameras. And there's cameras. But yeah, he said but it's I a understand. tricky thing to add like too much landscaping. Yeah. There's no green space there. <laughs> there's a little. Um, in, sorry, in the parking lot. Itself, oh, well, yeah. 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 The, I mean, the, you know, the, the tree council, I think spent at least a good hour, hour out there and, you know, some of the trees are doing okay, but a lot of the trees are really having a rough time in that yeah. plaza. So, yeah, probably the soil. <laughs> yeah. So. so, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of green space because the trees are really struggling. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess I would um, just reiterate what Ashok said. It was just, you know, um, really like, you know, shop right in them to go um, pesticide free. 
would like that to continue to be, um, you know, advocated for. And um, be careful with the lighting. Be careful with the lighting. And um, and and are they going to? Does this produce energy? I mean, can you know they're going to need like a? It's going to have a cover over it, obviously, probably, right? Um, or is it just? I mean, it's a little cover. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just a little to, guy, you know, it, it does need a tiny bit of covered so that you, you know, if it's raining, you can yeah. get your money without it. Oh. I think it covers about half the car. <laughs> okay. All right. Should we ask for solar panels on top? Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go chase. Ellen, are you chatting to me? Yes. Yeah. I'm doing a poor job. No, That's okay. Okay. Oh, I like it. So um, moving along. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any um, comments about this? Okay, I'm going to go with silence as no. So we're just going to put in that we would like to uh, make sure that the lighting is correct. We still we still want our pesticide free and solar and concern with the residents, but the tree council is on it as well because they're awesome. Yeah, so, they've been working pretty hard on that. So um all right. So I think that is that do we do you feel good about yeah. that? Yeah. And just as an update, the I mean the Chase Bank one is more substantial. So like I think it's good to get the comments from you guys on the pesticide free and reinforcing that the lighting is something that really has to be careful. And um, we'll add the solar panels to see if we can get them to put them on there. But Starbucks is also just swapping out signs. Um, but even though they're just swapping out signs, um, the planning board and the tree council is pushing them to, to swap out the dead trees on that side. Okay. So they're just pushing really hard because I don't know if the town board's gotten them, but the tree council has gotten a fair number of complaints about the trees in that plaza. So, so can I just ask a, a question? So is there uh, – is there – is there abil your ability to walk up to this as well? Like, do you have to make like a, a space for a person to stand so that the person who drives up doesn't hit the person that is standing there? Do you have, is that like a thing? Um, I mean, we can ask them about car pedestrian conflicts, but I think it's, it's probably like it's I, when I go to my son, Mark, like hopefully the cars, I mean, I definitely walk over to the ATM and then I've had cars like, you know, behind me waiting for me to finish my transaction. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You can see I take out a lot of money. Let's write a lot of big checks to colleges. That's all I do. So. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. We feel good about uh, moving forward? Okay, great. So, all right. So let's move on to uh, 2538 River Road, and this is the Kelts Farm uh, final subdivision. Yeah, so there isn't a lot for us to do on final subdivision. I mean, it's already been approved. It's already essentially been the roads have been put in. The only thing that we review between um, preliminary, which was approved, and final is to see if there are any site changes, you know, that substantially changed, <laughs> you know, to cause, a you know, a full review. And, um, I mean, you can see from the developer's, kind of points of the changes that occurred between preliminary and his proposed final is that they planted some extra trees, which we hardly ever see. So that's a good thing. Um, the chain link fencing actually is not going to be approved by the highway. So that's going to go back to split rail. Um, but, and that's on the, around the detention ponds. Okay. And to protect the forests. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, the bike path was mistakenly paved at 10 feet wide, so they just recently cut it back to 8 feet. But there was supposed to be 6 feet of grass between the edge of the bike path and the road, and there's only 4. Um, you, go, you could go out and take a look at that. I'm not sure that they have the ability to move it. <laughs> I, I, but I mean, it does look not as good as what the original plans were. Okay. I, I wrote, I was grateful that there, there path was. Path is there. The path was yeah, there. Yeah, the path is nice. to, you know, so. But, um. And and I did see that they pay that they planted on the other side, the berm side. Yeah, on yeah, no, on the on the side um, that the road doesn't go that where the road. Oh, on the Windsor side. Yeah, on the yeah. Windsor side. Um, not that we don't care about sewer manholes, but that that um second one, but the last one. Um, so I 
for the record, Ellen and her family on the hottest day of the summer, probably last year, <laughs> um, transplanted a bunch of the flowers from the old Kelts farm because the old Kelts farm was a flower field. And we moved them over Beautiful. to the Forever Wild area in um, Blatnick Park. I think most of them. Most of them survived because yes. Ellen got a cooler full of water and put it in the back of her car and watered them last summer. And yeah, <sighs> most of them have survived. So there's yes. some really nice flowers from the Kelts farm that were moved over to River Hill drive Blatnick Park. Hopefully they'll... And maybe we can get the Rotary la ladies to help us um, bring some more flowers over there. But um, but there's still plans to create like a biodiverse kind of field along that bike path. And um, we're still working on like the final, what the Windsor Drive, the end of Windsor Drive will look like. Um, because the road didn't go through there. So now we're thinking we could put like a gazebo and a flower bed, maybe bring some of the lupin over we had talked about before. So anybody who wants to be interested, I think um, the tree council and the CAC were very interested in keeping as many flowers as we could in the forever wild areas. Okay. And then maybe building some more places for flowers and trees on the Windsor Drive stub. I mean, just on a, a, just on, this is sort of like a sidebar, but like I, I, I walk down Windsor a lot and, um, like if you go up a little higher, there's that stream, there's a tiny mm -hmm. little bit of stream. So, um, um, this, um, maybe this might be too much, but I would love to see a garbage can of some sort. If we put up a gazebo or something, um, a lot of people throw their stuff into that river into that river so i um that was my earth day i cleaned that out really yes and i took a picture of all the stuff that i pulled out of there so like maybe if not a, a garbage can like a public um dog dog poop container yes, thing because a, unfortunately a lot of it was um it was uh dog stuff in bags and then they just threw the bags which was a little dis heartening. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I don't know exactly, um, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for or what I'm not looking for in this. And, um, I, when I was trying to look at it earlier, I kind of just got kind of cross-eyed because, oh. I, because I could see where things were happening, but I, I don't feel like I have any, um, um, uh, I, I mean, I, uh, I want, I was grateful for the spots that they were keeping and I was hoping that the, um, I was grateful for the, the, um, the bike path, but I didn't, I didn't see any spots where I was like, oh, you know, lot number 23 has enough space or, you know what I mean? It seemed like there were a, a lot of those trees and everything was very nice. Did anybody else pick up anything? I mean, I, I see, you know, we're still, we have the single entrance with the curb, say, you know, that and. Yeah. So the configuration is mostly the same. And like I said, m more plants, he still has to do street trees. So we'll still work with him on the street trees or the tree council can do that. Okay. But I was really looking from you guys as if somebody wants to volunteer to help um, with the um, Windsor drive stub and um, making maybe more of a biodiverse corridor along the bike path between Windsor Drive and Kelts Farm Road. Well, when you say volunteer, like what is it involved? Um, probably just reviewing the plans that Joel submits and walking the site and seeing what's growing back because there was a lot of change to that site and, you know, um, figuring out where we, where we could, you know, push. Like, I think Can you give a, do you have like a time, like a small timeline? Probably like a month. In a month? Yeah. In a month. So in July or August. Yeah. Not in June. And another thing that we might need is he had originally said he would do like a kiosk of information. And we thought it would be cool because the Celts farm was historic. Mm -hmm. The building wasn't able to be preserved. But if we could find a picture of it with the the fields or oh, some, I would love something, yeah. then we could put up a picture of the Celts farm fields along the bike path connection so that people could see um that which would be cool okay so i'm willing to look at the um i'm willing to look at the um 
you know, the, the Windsor the connection. Okay. And I really think that we should reach out to those neighbors. We, there were a lot of people that came out and had very strong opinions about mm -hmm. what was going to happen to their th thoroughfare. And perhaps we should reach out to them and find out what they would like. Yeah, I think. I think that would be a really great idea. I know we talked about it. I thought a couple of them might even be willing to like pitch in for some professional landscaping or something. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to be Laura out there going, let's plant flowers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe what, maybe what we could do is I know that um, this is maybe jumping, but, you know, um, I believe his name is Nick from the county, right? Mm -hmm. He was going to yeah. coordinate with, um, with, um, with um, the highway department, right, in the fall yeah. to do those plantings. So maybe that we could... Yeah, we might be able to do that. We too. could do that area as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now, if there, if there is any work to be done on improving the biodiversity on any piece anywhere, I'll go see. Okay, so I'll send that to you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Alan, do you want to do, well. do yeah. some too, Steve? Okay. Sure. And what, a, um, yeah, and perhaps even, you know, um, some birdhouses or something. Or oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I would love to see our, you know. You know who sets up with board horses? Roy Thompson. I know he yeah, does, but I'm just, it. I mean, can you imagine what, you know, the, all the different girls and Boy Scout clubs that we have in the, you know, and maybe they, I mean, they're always looking, I don't know if they're always looking for things to do, but. Ah, you know, uh, no, we could definitely do a program where they built birdhouses and brought oh, yeah. them out. That'd be cool. Right. Our troop can do it. Yeah. Right. So maybe, you know, you could do like troop, -da -da, whatever, and you can, but we can put it, it out right? to all the troops, but obviously our troop would be the best. But. <laughs> so it's just a thought, you know, to increase that as well. I would suggest That's like bat, idea. bat um, houses, but I don't want to, or even. We could put the bat houses in the higher trees. Sure. Yeah. And then the bird house is out in the field with all the flowers. Right. So those are my suggestions. That's what I thought. Um, I like it. Does any uh, any other comments on this area? Shall I take our, our silence as um, a time to end and to move on to reports? Everybody ready? Yes. Okay. All right, so um, we're going to close the door on 2538 River Road with um, um, some of us volunteering to um, work with uh, the Kelts Farm. What's his name? Joel. Joel, yeah. And just on what Windsor is going to look like, we're going to try to reach out to the um, some of the residents on um, Windsor to see you know how they feel about that and what that looks like. So. Um, to, you know, to keep that area. And then, you know, those suggestions for the boys and girls, um, boys scouts. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, reports. So we have the NRI. Okay, uh, yep. so on uh, May 14th, our uh, consultant, uh, Jim, was here, Jim Norton. And we had a totally awesome time. Um, the uh, he helped us survey, well, several things. Uh, first, we did the uh, town-owned uh, forest um, near the community center. And uh, inside, it is beautiful. Like lots of old growth trees. And um, uh, we saw many birds. And uh, there's actually... Um, the remnant of some kind of hiking path already in there. Uh, who put who put anything there when we don't know, but there already is. And it is the, the location is very nice because um, it is already close to uh, the uh, the place where the children are playing this sport and um, and and that sport, and people are coming to the swimming pool. Actually, while we were surveying, like four different people came to us and asked, like, hey, can we hike in there? And we said, like, hey, not yet, but we're moving in that direction. Um, so, um, and, and parents and, um, and, and kids. Um, so, 
Um, so uh, Jim has written his preliminary report and Laura has a copy. I'm happy to give anyone a, a, a copy. And he's going to be submitting his final version. I have the email from him from today saying it will be like a couple more days and he will be uh, submitting the final version. I mean, in my opinion, that's like the best $2,000 anyone has, uh, has, has spent. Um, then we surveyed the Blacknick Pond area and the pond is, well, having some issues and uh, Jim has some suggestions. We went to, uh, went to Stanford Park, uh, which is uh, next to the Schenectady Pine Bush and uh, which is another town owned uh, 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 parcel. Uh, that one had no hiking trails of any kind. We just uh, uh, <laughs> went inside. Um, and then you have heard me talk about this a lot, uh, these, these little neighborhood parks, little neighborhood wild space um, that's really important to the people living there. So um, we surveyed one um, at the end of my street at Arcona Court. And, um, you know, it's very crudely, it's about three times as big as this uh, town board meeting room. So not very big in the grand scheme of things. But it's a nice little forest, uh, and it's a red-tailed hawk habitat. Um, a community members showed up. Um, uh, there weren't any children besides my son, <laughs> um, one kid. Overall, very, very, very productive day, and uh, he's going to write a report uh, with some recommendations. I guess my question is, how do we present the findings of the report to the town board, planning board, whoever. So what I think we should do is have him send the final to the CAC, make sure that all the CAC members have read and commented on it. And then um, we should make a memo and present it to the town board and see if they will. So the whole point of an, of an, of a natural resource inventory is for it to be adopted and, you know, essentially adopted and enforced by the town board and the planning board. So um, I think we should ask for adoption of it at the town board, uh, at least a recognition that it's the mini NRI has been completed. We fulfilled our grant and attach it to, you know, the resolution to the town board and then make sure that the planning board has a copy and then we can reference it whenever we see any plans um, come through that would potentially affect you know, what we've already surveyed. And then obviously the point of this is to springboard in order to do a full one, is to get the money for a full one. Yeah. And, and regarding the full no, full one, uh, first of all, um, I will go ahead and uh, and send Jim's draft to everyone uh, mm -hmm. in the CAC for, uh, for a comment. Um, now regarding the full one, uh, Jim had the idea that like, you know, you can do it piecemeal, like, Okay, now here's a two thousand dollars. We surveyed four thousand. Do some more. Then you know try to get three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars next time, and then and then do it, and then yeah. over a number of years you cover the whole town. Um, because a, a full NRI uh, is, is like a massive undertaking and would require something around, around like thirty, forty thousand dollars, which is a much higher um, uh, money to raise. So I, I was wondering if anybody had any thoughts of doing it segment by segment. Yeah, Chelsea, do you want to just speak to what you typed in? Yeah, um, so I had my uh, Schenectady Environmental Advisory Committee meeting uh, last month, and I brought this up. And, I mean, they're always assisting with grants, and it's kind of, part of SKIAC in a way. And so Alex mentioned, you know, if we need any assistance with this, he's happy to review it, go over it, um, you know, give his input or even, you know, put out there to say, this is what we need and, and this is how we can help. Um, so yeah, just let me know exactly what you want and I can I can get Alex on that. Uh, Chelsea, is, is he, and actually I just met Alex at another event. Um, is, is SIAC a funding agency? I, I, I wasn't aware of that. So it's my understanding it's similar to this, but on a county level, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, and Alex is wonderful. I mean, he's been doing this for a little while now, but he's he's very 
um, knowledgeable about writing grants and, and all of that. So he's definitely a very good resource if we need it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Can you refresh my memory? We got the, this grant was from the, um, from the Niskuna Community Foundation? Yes. Okay. And so you are allowed to go every year and ask them. And then maybe even if it's super successful, like, don't they have a bigger one? They have, every year they fund one $10,000 project. One. And that's got a specific deadline, April 10th or something like that. The next, the, the, their other grant, the $2,000 one, are rolling. can be applied anytime um, uh, uh, you want. So um, I'm... I'm happy to write the ten thousand dollar one if the if the CAP wants to uh, move in that direction and do a slightly bigger one, say with ten properties next time. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if we have good contact with the Niskuna Community Foundation, once the final is there and adopted by the town board, we should share it with them and let them know the impact that it's having in our town, and then hmm. apply for the bigger one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of doing it piecemeal because we learn more every time and make make the research more valuable. And so I I I be it would be great to get that ten thousand, but from the if you I I had give to the so when you read what is given to, it tends to be more um um yeah, it's it, the, it. I think it would be a struggle, and it's a lot of and it's a lot of work. I, I've uh, so they've restructured how they give their grants. I I wrote one of the big grants in order to get um, curtains for Rosendale High School or Rosendale Elementary School a number of years back, and it was it was it was very difficult. It took a long time to get all the information. So um, not to say, and I'm just thinking that with where and how our money in is situated and how the world is standing that perhaps just many, you know, grants along the way, if, if that, if we could do that through either Schenectady County or, yeah, or I mean, at least start, I don't want to squash it, but I do know that they're really hard work and. Okay. I might be I might be just too negative, Nelly. So um, I apologize. Well, maybe we could ask for another two thousand one after they see what we did. You know, like in a year or two. Um, the other thing that we have, which it's a little bit of a stretch, but maybe a show you could or anybody who's listening could use their massive brain powers on this one, is um, you know we get these rebates from NYSERDA for these clean energy things that we do, but they're really meant to be applied to clean energy programs. So I think we'd have to make a really strong case to them that an NRA is in some way reducing greenhouse gases or protecting energy. But there may be a way to say, hey, this directly relates to conserving land, which then directly relates to reducing greenhouse gases. And, you know, you don't have development on it. So then I don't know, it could be a stretch, but we could give it a try because then we would have a 5000 chunk that we could use. So I also, uh, so I think that you, that there, you don't, I personally don't think that we should wait. And I think we should ask the NAS, the Niskuna Community Foundation again, say, this is what we've managed to do with this. This is what it has benefited the community. This is how we would, you know, we'd like to continue to move forward on this. And this is why it's important and, and show them what we've done. And I don't see why, you know, to me, that seems a, a really good use of two thousand dollars in the community, and then we, you know, um, and then between that and your the new contact at the the county level, okay. I mean, and you can look at the ten, the the big the big one, you know, okay. for sure. I don't want to persuade you from not doing it, but I don't, I don't think you would. I don't think because they're rolling. I don't think that the two thousand is a big lift, mm -hmm. especially with what it can do yes. in compared to you know, maybe 10,000 that they might be saving for, a, you know, a, a bigger social commitment. Sure. Sure. So th that, those, that's my two cents. I'll be quiet now. So does anybody else um, have any thoughts about that? I'd like to make any comments. Oh, one, uh, the Mohawk River Watershed Program, they are officially our 
DEC funding source for NRR. I've written them so many emails, they won't write me back. I've called, left messages in the phone number given in the website. Does anyone have contacts there that give? Mohawk River Watershed Program? It's Catherine Kazowski. Yeah, she's, she's not responding. Oh. River Mohawk River Watershed Program. There's a totally awesome one called the Hudson River Estuary Program. That's the cool kids' table. We are unfortunately out of their boundary area. Okay, uh, but it's the Mohawk but, but River. For us, it is the Mohawk River Watershed Program. It's uh, one of the grant that fund municipal NRIs. Is it open right now? I don't know. They, oh, I can check for that with you, Ashok. I think I said this. So we were awarded round four and five. Okay. Um, if there's a round six open, I'm not aware of it, but I can look and we can apply. Okay. Um, for round four, we were awarded um, the, the, uh, some of the upgrades to the, the Aqueduct Park docks so that they wouldn't wash away. <laughs> and then um, round five, we it was an intermunicipal um, award to do a, a stormwater video, which Schenectady County and Miskuna and Glenville and a couple of other communities are all working on. Um, so I'm happy to apply for round six. The nice thing about the grant is there's not a lot of communities that are eligible for it, which helps our eligibility. But the thing that's tough now is that we've gotten awards the last two rounds. Mm -hmm. Well, considering we may only ask for like 2,000 or 3,000 or something like that. Yeah, no, I think we should try. It would be round six, and we should see if it's open. Okay. And, I mean, Catherine, I think, is the only person that administers that program. She's yeah. probably really busy. But if you get the grant, then you get the grant. Like, yeah. you know, we can just apply through the grant gateway. Like, I know how to do that. So if I write something up, can you forward to Catherine? Yeah, I can. Um, and also maybe you know how you do this sometimes when I'm supposed to do stuff, but I get off track. It's just, you know, call me in a couple of days and be like, can you see if the watershed grant's open? Okay. And I'll check on it. I know sometimes you call me like five times before I do it, but. <laughs> I think people are busy. Sometimes people call me five times before I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, because that sounds um, awesome. Um, and I'm glad that we're, that is moving along. If there's anything else that we need to do in order, well, you'll send that to us and then we'll make our comments and then we'll go on to um, getting it into the, um, the board. So the next one is the pesticide, pesticide outreach update. And um, so I don't really have an update. I have a, um, I'm very much looking forward to this summer. Um, it's been a little um, crazy, but I'm very much looking forward to walking um, neighborhoods and also still going back to the, um, the, um, the farmer's market and, um, and to be able to, um, I can see lots of people are choosing. Um, we had lots of people in my neighborhood that did the no mo may. We had um, people that are not using it. I just want to see if I can convince them to buy a sign and put it in the yard, that sort of thing. So that's my um, sort of goal for the summer. And yeah, so that's about that. And it, I um, and it was I was glad that they read the things about um, the lawn care. So that was exciting and hoping to work and start um, composting with the grant with um, that's our next. Yeah. I should probably start just putting that on our agenda. So um, yeah, because um, yeah, I, um, I, I've read a lot about how poor we are at composting and recycling. So that's my next, my next um, hurdle. And then um, lastly is the low mo um, biodiversity initiative update. Um, well, I mean, I thought you read the, the, yeah. the email from Roy, which is really good. And then the one that we were working on, on the River Hill part, the highway has stopped mowing it. Um, I'm not sure if they put the signs up, but they, no, they couldn't have. They're still in my office. They were supposed to come get the signs and put them up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they still haven't yet. Okay. And I'll I guess, to, and then, you know, and we sort of, um, have, so, and we have a tentative schedule for the highway department and for Nick 
to in the um, fall to grade it and mm -hmm. to drop the um, and to drop the seeds in those in that spot. It was uh, they deemed it. They thought that it was too um, the wrong. It was too warm. Too warm and too wet. Too warm and too wet. So um, so anyway, so hopefully that um, we can. Um, so that is on at least the uh, um, is ten is tentatively or ha we need to nail it down to make sure that that gets on the schedule for whenever they do that in September or October. And then I guess the what, you know, what sign did you guys finally? Oh, it's so cute. I so <laughs> the final. Um, so there has been there is no sign yet for the uh, the Lomo that w that I did. There hasn't been a sign with the um, with the bubble inks and all that. That one has not been designed or or um, or done. So um, I thought who was doing that one? Who was uh, I thought Roy was working on that one, although he may have deferred it to you because he thinks you're the sign wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sign wizard. I, um, so um, I um, I haven't really um, in, embraced that as of yet as I um, just a couple of personal things that have come up that have um, steered me away from things. And uh, so I would work with somebody, but I, I, might, I can't do it by myself. So, and I will in the fall have more time, but the summer uh, um, I sort of got my hands full. Yeah, so. we're doing good. We're doing good. Yeah. Uh, I'll have Ray, I'll reach out to him to put up the signs again. I forgot about that. And then um, I think it's a good idea to get Nick, like on Nick's schedule for the fall. Like they were happy when they met each other, but like, let's like pick a date. <laughs> yeah, let's set, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can. Those are achievable things for us. Okay, and then maybe I'll reach out to Roy and ask him what he's doing with the signs. So yeah, or I can, or I can. I I just I um I wanted to help him, and he had some really. He's got maybe even with these new photos, we can try to use some of those photos. And um, I mean, I have a vision of what I would like it to look like. That like the big, you know, the same one that would be really good for over at um at Kelts Farm. Mm -hmm. And I've taken pictures of them that I've seen, you know, so they're, they're on metal stands. They're, they're in, in, you know, and they're like sort of that leaned and you can read them as you go through, but they're a big sign, but I don't know where you would, if that's the, what you're looking for, for like the bubble ink stuff, or if you're looking for the similar sign that I have. Yeah. Cause ours are like, I mean, I actually thought they were going to be metal. They're but they're not. <laughs> um, but I still think ours are really. I mean, they came out really nice. Okay. And um, seen them. oh, we can if you okay. want to see them. But um, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna mount them in a permanent way. But they're they weren't very expensive, so we can replace them if you know. Okay. So I guess my question is: Are we looking for one sign that is for the Lomo, you know, biodiversity? you know, to go up or are we looking for several of them to be able to put around um, similar to what, what we did on the, the other low side. Mo. Yeah. We'd have to ask him. So I, I, or anybody can speak up because. Well, well, we can ask Roy. Yeah. What so, or what you think? What's the latest, uh, I'm just trying to catch up here. So for so our area near that driving range, that seems to be reaching a conclusion. Right, and that, like when you said the highway department has stopped mowing, like, like, like yes, and area. some of the plants have survived that were planted. That okay. most of them have actually the, the, the lupin. Yes, uh, all bunch all of different kinds ones. of ones. Okay. There were irises, irises, yeah. and then there's also that is the area where they're going to go next fall and okay. and do a planting there. Okay, and then there's the area up on top of the. Um, Blatnick Hill. Uh, Blatnick Hill. The, yeah, the that's cap. the one. Like, what's the status on that? So, um, did you get Roy's letter? I get a lot of things. Yes. Send, I can send it to you um, again. So, I had read it um, just because he had done, he had, they had stopped him. At, they came to a an agreement on what wasn't going to be done. And then, um, and then some of the um, grassland birds have come back. And then okay. Roy went out. And they counted birds. They tagged birds. He and his, um, I'm, I'm sorry, his name is escaping me. Yeah, I can yeah. forward the email to you, Asha. And um, he, um, and he, they um, banded birds and counted and um, gave a, a nice detail of that. 
Okay. So the so question what's is, what's the highway department doing? Like, uh, do they have a more in schedule, or is it like just a one-time deal? Um. I mean, I was under the impression that it was that the re, that one for the Lomo that it was going to get that was going to get mowed maybe um, you know at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I feel once like or twice. It has to get brush hogged every year or two. Yeah. And that, and then there's also concern about invasive species. Yeah. Our, our, we have an invasive species issue, so okay. these are sort of. So where the sign is going to go up there or what it would look like or okay. so. So the golf, the driving range signs are all set and there's a plan and some things are in motion for the landfill camp. Yes. I feel like the land, we wanted to make the landfill cap just a little bit different because that was, we weren't going to really plant wildflowers up there. Okay. We were just going to make that so that to bring back the bobolinks and those nesting birds and that sort of thing. Yeah. Wildflowers, are, wildflower meadow is not a bobolink habitat. No, I know. That's why. So yeah. that is why we wanted to leave that like what it was, but we wanted to tell people why we were making it, a, okay. that this is a bobolink. So it needs to be a different sign that's up there. Now, whether it needs to be like four signs or six signs and they should, or if it needs to be one sign is sort of like up in the air. But it sounds to me not like now from having this discussion is the area of the cap. Like if you were going to put four signs around, you know, the area that of, you know, the four corners of it, mm -hmm. um, that that maybe it, we should go more towards the sign design that I, that we did for the other one, simply because it is an easier sign for the highway department to put up. It's not very expensive. We can replace them should something happen. And we can then maybe perhaps feature the bobo links on that. Okay. So I feel like that, does that sound mm -hmm. like an idea? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I feel like I can work within those parameters and that seems like a little bit easier for me. Yeah. That, yeah. I okay. Think. All right. I feel better about that. So I will, um, I will, Roy is Mr. Spot on, get it done. So um, I will do my best to keep up with him. Well, it took Roy like four years. But, <laughs> I mean, he yeah. definitely does work super, super hard. Yes. But everything in life goes slowly. Yes. So um, Ashok, I do not think that there is a current round of the Mohawk River Watershed Grant open. Okay. But we should keep an eye out. It looks like the last one was the five and they haven't announced the six yet. Okay. So do we feel like we've covered everything? Are we ready to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I need a motion for adjournment. My Mo motion is yes. Okay. Does anyone want a second? Second. We have a, uh, we have a second. So um, the June 8th, 2020. What? Oh, all in favor. Whoopsie. <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. okay. It's orange. orange. So the June 8th, uh, 2022 is now closed. Thank you, Ellen. Great Thank job. you. Great job. And, and next